Hello, everybody. Welcome to MME 2305, Material Energy Balances. I'm your professor, D.A. Robertson. Um, I can be reached at the email droberson at utep.edu. Uh, we're continuing our lectures about reactive energy balances. And I'm going to be dividing these up into kind of shorter lectures. I think that might be a little more convenient. Um, so the first uh, topic now moving forward, so we talked about reactive energy balances already at kind of a high level. Uh, the first thing or the next thing I'm going to talk about is heat of vaporization. I painstakingly colored the uh, lettering here to make it look like a cloud sort of thingy. That's about uh, Heat of vaporization is kind of interesting. Um, we have kind of the steam engine coming through, so vaporization um, it's kind of interest is, is kind of an important thing. Uh, heat of vaporization can actually be found on uh, the actual standard heat of vaporization can actually be found on the thermodynamic tables. Um, it's listed as a phase change. Um, this is kind of a term I tried to Star Wars eyes it. I don't think I succeeded, uh, but hopefully you guys get the point. Um, the ease at which evaporation occurs is often referred as the tendency to scape. And uh, so different liquids have different tendencies to scape. Um, alcohol uh, will evaporate um, much more quickly than water. Um, so that's, that's a tendency to scape is uh, that property. And um, we're going to uh, work out a problem uh, for water and kind of examine water's tendency to scape. Uh, we want to calculate uh, the heat of vaporization of water at 70 degrees C. Um, I worked this problem out in terms of centigrade uh, because uh, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees C. And so we're, we're, this is below the boiling point, 70 degrees C, still a little warm, but not quite uh, boiling. Um, and so there is a heat of vaporization. Um, water will evaporate at 70 degrees C. Water will evaporate at room temperature, actually, as well. Um, so we're going from liquid to gas at 70 degrees C. Well, how do we tackle this problem? Well, it's best to think of things in terms of a cycle. And so water is going to evaporate, but mathematically, we're going to first take water to the boiling point, which is 100 degrees C. Uh, we're then going to incorporate the heat of vaporization, uh, which is on the thermodynamic table, and I'll show that to you in a moment. And then uh, we have to cool the gaseous water um, from um, 100 degrees C to 70 degrees C. So we think of that in terms of a cycle, and we have three delta H's to consider. Um, delta H1 is the sensible heat. Um, you can also use uh, heat capacity equations or enthalpy equations, but if you have the tabularized data, um, you can use your sensible heat values and kind of take advantage of or pay in mind, rather, uh, this process of heating water in the liquid form from 70 to 100 degrees C. Uh, delta H2 is the heat of vaporization. It's taken right off the table. And delta H3 is cooling gaseous uh, water from 100 degrees C to 70 degrees C. And again, we can use the tables. Um, I kind of told you the answer to this already, but what information uh, would you need to solve this problem? So always think about, as an engineer especially, what information do I need to solve my problem? In this case, um, it's the heat of vaporization that's given right off the table. Uh, heat, heat capacity equations, you can also use the enthalpy equations or just the sensible heat data if you have that on the table. So here's an example of two tables. Uh, we have the liquid water, and it's funny, it's water. They call it hydrogen oxide. Uh, sometimes I even forget the chemical names. Uh, sometimes I forget that the mineral name for salt, simple table salt, sodium chloride, is halite. So we can refer to water as hydrogen oxide. That's kind of cool. And um, the sensible heat values are given here. I didn't put the equations on it. Um, kind of the point of this slide is you got to be wary of the tables. And so if you're using the kind of the two different phases here, um, you want to make sure you're using a separate table for um, liquid water and a separate table for um, gas form water. 
And, uh, and, and luckily our, our uh, thermodynamic table, the Excel-based table generator rather, um, has this. And so we see there's different uh, sensible heat values for liquid water and sensible um, as compared to gaseous water as well. Uh, pay attention to these heat capacity values because we're going to have an example of where we use these as well. Um, again, separate tables for liquid and gas. And so to solve this problem, we want to use uh, the, the two separate tables. These are the values, again, that we care about. Um, so the sensible heat of, of liquid water at 70 and 100 degrees C, and the sensible heat of gaseous water at 70 and 100 degrees C. Um, if you have the CLG table, um, you don't want to use it to solve this problem. And uh, you can't really uh, do anything uh, for this problem with these values because you only really get it for one phase. Um, you could use the enthalpy equations um, and also the, uh, the heat capacity equations as well. And uh, I only put the heat capacity equations here, um, but we're not going to work this problem out that way. We're going to use the sensible heat values. And uh, something else we're going to use is the, is the heat capacity values. And, and so I'll show this problem worked out two different ways. And uh, hopefully you find that helpful. Um, kind of incorporating the heat capacity values. And so C sub P is constant pressure heat capacity. If you remember, um, enthalpy is the integral of a uh, constant pressure heat capacity or C sub P um, dt. And you can um, basically say delta H is CP delta T. So we have our temperature interval, in this case, 70 to 100. And so I'll show uh, working out this problem that way as well. All right, so we are working out um, this heat of vaporization problem and where we're determining the heat of vaporization of water at uh, 70 degrees C. And so this is a little crude the way I'm doing, uh, doing it this time. Um, in the previous sequence, I said, it's best to think of this in terms of a cycle. Um, so water is going from liquid to gas. It's going to, uh, this process is gonna occur at 70 degrees C. Um, I did this problem in terms of Celsius uh, because the uh, boiling point of water is familiar, hopefully, to us all, and the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Um, so we're doing liquid to gas. So water evaporates at, at lower temperatures in the boiling point. Um, just think about leaving a, a cup of water on the nightstand or something like that. You come back a few days later, there's far less water than was in it. Um, that's because there is a heat of vaporization at, at various temperatures. And uh, we're going to go through uh, working this problem out. Um, I said it's best to think of terms, uh, think of things in terms of a cycle. And so uh, we want to get, and this kind of a, it's, it's another Kirchhoff's law kind of thing. You know, we're getting from point A to point B. Doesn't matter how you get there, the, the net energy is going to be the same. Um, so the first um, change in enthalpy is going from uh, liquid to liquid uh, from 70 to 100 degrees C. So the sensible heat um, is what delta H1 is, and we'll go through this uh, one more time. Uh, the second um, delta H, uh, or change in enthalpy, is the heat of vaporization, uh, which was um, given to us off the table. Um, it's about 40,865 joules per mole. And then the third delta H is cooling our gas, gaseous form of uh, water um, from 100 degrees to 70 degrees. And for that, we're going to use the sensible heat values. And um, I have uh, kind of made this little sheet to work it out on just to kind of keep a reminder of uh, the cycle um, just so you guys can see it. Um, let me kind of put this here and then hopefully it's not too, too blurry, but this is the sensible heat tables. Um, we had a digital version on the previous slide I'm going to highlight our critical values. So for water liquid, um, and then hopefully you guys can see this. 
do the best I can here. So we're at the, on the liquid table. Um, so this is liquid. If you can't see it. And uh, the values we care about are the sensible heat of water at 70 degrees Celsius and the sensible heat of water at 100 degrees Celsius. And I'm very, very sorry it's blurry, but I'll, I'll write them out. Um, this is 3,388 uh, uh, joules per mole. This is uh, 5,659 joules per mole. Uh, the other two values we're going to care about are 15, 16. So we're going to care about the sensible heat of water um, at 70 degrees, but in the gas form. So this is the gas table. And again, I'm sorry it's blurry, but we'll, I'll read out the values and then you can kind of hopefully correlate this with the previous, where I have the digital version and the previous sequence. And at 2531 is the uh, value here. So we care about um, sensible heats at 70 and 100 degrees uh, for liquid and 70 and 100 degrees uh, for gas. And then that's where those values are coming from. And I'll highlight it um, on the uh, on the digital version as well, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, delta H1, okay, so delta H1 is heating uh, liquid water um, from 70 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, okay, so that's delta H1. And again, if you remember, it helps to um, think of things in terms of a path. So you can kind of diagram out what delta H1 actually is. And so well, we have 100, we have um, 70, and then down here is 25. Okay, so 298 Kelvin, 25 degrees um, Celsius. Um, so we're heating. And so first we have to lower from 70 to 25, and then we have to raise from 25 to 100, okay? And uh, I'll kind of try to color this in a little bit, so. So this is delta H1. And so on our table, and I, I know it's a little blurry, um, but on the table, the sensible heat is, is 3,388 at 70 degrees. So the first value uh, we write is the cooling from 70 to 25. And so this is negative now, right? Because we're going from 70 to 25, we're going down, so it's negative. Uh, negative 3,388 joules per mole. Um, we're going to raise it from 25 to 100 degrees Celsius, and that's going to be plus, right, because we're going up, so it's plus, and that's a 5,659 uh, joules per mole. And so delta H1 is equal to add it up. I got uh, 2271. And you can work it out with your calculator, see if I'm wrong or not. That's always good. Uh, delta H2 is the tabulated heat of vaporization. So the regular heat of vaporization at, at, at actually 100 degrees C. And uh, that was given to us and that was um, 4865.13, I rounded up, joules per mole. And delta H3, which is this one now. Now in delta H3, we're going, we're taking um, gaseous H2O from 100 degrees to 70 degrees C. So let's draw out our little graph again. And so we're going to go, um, this time we're going, I'll do 
these. We're going to go from 100 degrees, and I forgot to put 25, excuse me. We're going to go from 100 degrees to room temperature first, and then we're going to go from room temperature back up to 70 degrees. Okay, so that's the cycle that delta H3 is taking in reality. So we're cooling from um, 100 to 70. We're using the sensible heat values, so we have to pay respect to room temperature. And this is equivalent to 298K. Um, so we're going from 100 to 25, and we're going from 25 back up to 70. Okay, so 100 to 25 is a negative 2531. And then let me show you where I'm getting these values, even though it's blurry. Um, on the gas table, this value here is 2,531, and I'm very sorry you can't see it. Um, I need a better camera. Maybe you can see it a little bit there. So 2,531, uh, the value at 70 is 1,516. Okay, so we're gonna add that. So now we're going from 25 to 70, and this is all joules per mole, plus um, 1,516. And that's equal to uh, negative 1,015 joules per mole. Okay, so that's delta H3. And so now to answer our question, determining the heat of vaporization of water at 70 degrees C, hooray, um, we sum these delta H's, so it's very similar to what we've done in the past. Delta H total is the sum of delta H, and that's delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. And so delta H1 was um, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 7, 1 joules per mole. Right in front of me, I don't know why I'm struggling so hard to read it. So delta H1. Just kind of highlight these. Delta H1, delta H2, and delta H3. These are the three values we're adding up. See that a little better. And sum of delta H, let me use a slightly bigger pen. And so that's 2271 joules per mole plus 4865.13 joules per mole. And that kind of went off the edge there. There we go, we're a little better. And then I'm gonna to have to write it underneath, I'm sorry. Minus 1015 joules per mole. So delta H total um, is equal to, um, I got 42121 joules per mole. And so that is the heat of vaporization of water at 70 degrees C. And we're gonna take a look at another way to do it um, shortly. All right, so we're going to do the um, heat of vaporization of water again, uh, but this time we're going to be using uh, the heat capacity values on the uh, tables. And uh, this is kind of a different way to do it. It's actually kind of a simple way to do it. Um, if you look at the heat capacity values, and, and hopefully they're not too blurry, um, they're pretty stable. So from 70 to um, um, 100, uh, we vary uh, by basically half of an inch here. So, so we're, we're pretty stable. Um, the gaseous form of water is uh, even more stable. Um, if you look at these heat capacity values, and let me highlight them in yellow. Um, so you can see what I'm looking at a little better. So we, we highlight our heat capacity values and, um, and they're pretty stable. Um, you can kind of choose a midpoint and this is a little hand wavy, but you still get the same answer, okay? And uh, I mean, if you really want to get a precise value, you could add all these up and average it and that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm gonna pick a value kind of right in the middle, uh, roughly, 
um, because they're they're um, they're uh, they're pretty close um, to one another. And um, so I was going to choose like seventy five point five for this one, and um, I was going to choose uh, this is pretty much thirty three point eight. It's pretty close. Um, I can I can round it so seventy to um, one hundred. Uh, you go thirty-three point seven to thirty-three point nine. Seventy to one hundred, you go seventy-five point four six to seventy-six. So I was just going to pick seventy-five as the as the key capacity value. And um, here um, we can we can take a look again at our cycle. Uh, we're still following the same concept. Uh, we're going from um, um, seventy degrees to one hundred degrees in the liquid, incorporating the heat of vaporization again. And then going from 100 degrees to 70 degrees, but in the gaseous phase. Okay, so this is kind of a multi-phase kind of problem, quite simple. Um, so if you remember, um, delta H, and then I kind of showed on the previous sequence, and you can say it's C, P, delta T. Okay, so delta H1, we're going from uh, 100, sorry, we're going from 70 to 100 degrees C, so that's our delta T. Um, I said we're going to kind of arbitrarily pick a number in the middle. It, it's, it's quite stable, so I'm going to say 75.5 uh, um, equals 75, 75.5, 70, um, sorry, 100 minus 70. And the reason why I'm doing 100 minus 70 um, is because our delta T has to be positive because we're actually increasing. And so we're going from 70 to 100, so the net difference is 30 degrees. It's positive because we're going up. And um, if you work this out, um, you say 75.5 uh, times um, this difference times 30, basically, is... Um, 22.662, sorry, 2,266.2, excuse me, joules per mole. Um, delta H2 is equal to our heat of vaporization, and so that was 4865 joules per mole. Um, delta H3, and we'll take a look at our cycle again. Um, we're going from 100 degrees to 70 degrees, so that's a negative 30. And so delta H3, um, again, equals C, P, or heat capacity, constant pressure. Delta T equals, um, I had about, I say I said 33.8. 70 minus 100, and that's equal to negative 1,014 joules per mole. Um, delta HV equals delta H total. And uh, so that's summing all these up again, uh, like we saw before. So we're going to take the uh, sum of this guy, this value, and this value. And these numbers look pretty similar uh, to what we worked out here, if you look. So we're, we're pretty close, right? So working it out with our, even our arbitrarily picked heat capacity for uh, the liquid state um, is very, very similar. And uh, I got, uh, I'll just write roughly 42. Uh, kilojoules per mole. Um, you can work it out and get the kind of more exact number, but it's, it's pretty much the same. Um, and that kind of proves to us that uh, delta H is CPDT. Um, we've done similar problems where we integrated, uh, integrated this as well. And uh, so hopefully uh, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Oh my. It's the end of the lecture. If you have any questions, you can email me at droberson at utep.edu.